Hello and welcome to freephotoshop.com and this week's tutorial where we're going to be looking at how to create this. We've got a photograph I took a few years back of the Seattle skyline as taken from the Bainbridge Island ferry, I'll have you know, and then we've got some text at the bottom half of the image partially covering the sea and inside the text if I zoom in a touch we've got yet another photograph of the Seattle skyline this time taken from the top of the Space Needle and as you can see this photograph is held within the boundaries of the text block and we're going to take a look at creating this effect inside this tutorial. Okay I'm going to minimize this image and bring up another photograph called Seattle Skyline which is the same photograph as you saw a few seconds ago minus the text and I'm going to start by writing the text onto this document I'm going to hit the T key on the keyboard to select the text tool and then I'm going to come up here to the options bar and first of all select the font I'd like to use and I'm going to stay with impact in this case then I'm going to come over here to the size options and then I'm going to type in 150 points as the size of the text I'm going to use inside the image finally I'm going to select the text color and what we're looking for here is some kind of prominent color so we can see what's happening whilst we're typing. This isn't going to be the final color as we're going to be filling the image, or the text I should say, with another image. And I'm going to drag the color selector down to the bottom left hand side to use pure black in this example. I'm going to press OK once I've finished. Now with the caps lock on, I'm going to click inside the image and then type Seattle and once I've done that I'll select the move tool and just drag the text around until it's in the center and that looks pretty good there now we're all ready for the image we want to go inside the text so I'm gonna bring up this image called downtown Seattle and all I'm gonna do is firstly make sure I've still got the move tool selected then I'm going to drag the image into the Seattle skyline image and whilst I drop the image by the way I'm going to hold down the shift key to drop the image into the center of the Seattle skyline image like so. Now we can go ahead and close the second image we won't be needing that anymore in this tutorial. Now we're starting to build up a few layers over here in the layers palette we've got our background layer, our text layer and now our layer we want inside the text and we can put it inside the text by first of all making sure it's active inside the layers palette and then coming up here to the layers menu and selecting create clipping mask now if we look at the layers palette we can see that we've clipped the active layer to the layer directly below it and we can recognize this layer is now clipped to the one below by seeing this little arrow here and by the way if we wanted to change these layers back to standard layers we can either go back up to the layer menu and select release clipping mask or easier still we can create or release a clipping mask by holding down the alt key here on the PC or the options key on the Mac and floating the mouse between the two layers until the icon changes into this little shape that looks like two small shapes with an arrow pointing left uh, really small you might not be able to see it but um, it is there so with one click we can release the clipping mask and with another click we can recreate it so what's basically happening is that the downtown layer is now only displaying where there are active pixels inside the text layer so in the areas of transparency the downtown layer is not being displayed conversely the active areas of the text layer are allowing the downtown layer to shine through so what we're allowed to see of the downtown layer is being managed by the layer it's being clipped to so where the text layer is transparent we're seeing nothing and where the text layer is opaque we're seeing the pixels from the above layer now, even though the two layers are now clipped together, we still have complete control over them individually. 
so I can select the text layer in the Layers palette, and as long as the Move tool is selected, I can drag the text around independently of the Downtown layer. Likewise, I can activate the Downtown layer in the Layers palette and move that around independently of the Text layer. And in fact, I'm going to leave this one so we can see a tiny bit of the skyline here as well, inside the text. OK, once we've got the text and the clipped layer in the right position, I'm going to add some layer styles to the text in order to make it stand out a little better. So I'm going to double left click on the right hand side of the layers name over here in the layers palette to bring up the layer style dialog box. And I'm going to start by selecting the stroke option and then clicking inside the color swatch to reveal the color picker. And then I'm going to go ahead and lift a color from the image. Something like this dark blue in the sea would be just great. OK, I'm going to click OK inside the colour picker to accept that change. And I'm now going to change the position of the stroke to centre, and then increase the size of the stroke to 10 pixels. Next, I'm going to activate the outer glow, and I'm going to change the spread to 15%, and the size to 30 pixels. And then I'm going to click OK to accept all of the layer style changes. OK, that's looking pretty good at this stage. Now, don't forget we can still change the position of the downtown and text layers independently of each other, and we're still dealing with live text as well. So if we double left click the icon in the, um, the text icon, I should say, over here in the layers palette, we can type something completely different if we wanted to. Um, I'm going to type freephotoshop.com, just as an example here really. And then we can still use all the relevant transform controls by hitting Control T on the PC or Command T on the Mac and then transform the text to the correct size for the image. And I'm doing that by dragging the corner handle on the bounding box whilst holding down the Shift and Alt buttons and that's Shift and Option buttons on the Mac to constrain the proportions of the text. And I'm going to hit Enter on the keyboard once I've done that to confirm the changes. Then I'm going to tab away the palettes and hit F on the keyboard twice to enter full screen mode, which will leave us looking at the finished effect. Well, I hope you found this tutorial on freephotoshop.com to be helpful. Thanks very much for watching.